Colonialism and Slavery in Churches. First Bible Lesson, Galatians chapter 3 verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Second Bible Lesson, Galatians chapter 5 verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Golden Text, Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. A kingdom without colonial influence. Beloved children, I have always said, wherever the giver of advice is, there must also be people to carry out the advice. Wherever a preacher of the word of God is, a doer is there also. By the same token, I have repeated all the words and instructions of God several times to you, but because of your stubbornness, I have to start all over again in order to save you. The three Bible portions above have one thing, and they reveal the kingdom of God. You have been assured in the first lesson that with the presence of faith, none is under the law. Now we walk in spirit, and live by the spirit. All problems in the world are caused by the enactment of laws. The introductions of laws, among people, has increased the rate of crime, instead of curbing crime in society. Therefore we are not under the law, because we are those who walk in the spirit. Anyone who wishes to pass through the law to salvation has been separated from Christ. With the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, we have nothing to do with law. Any person who wants to be justified through the law is separating himself from Christ. So beloved brethren, you have to listen to the Spirit in you at all times. What he tells you to do, do that, and abhor whatever he asks you to forsake. If I am instructed by the Spirit to stop preaching now, I will simply stop and get down from the pulpit. If the Holy Spirit directs me to get into the room and lock myself in there, I would not hesitate. Also, if I am directed to come out to sit in a particular place for a whole day, I would not deviate from that. The children of God are not under any law, because the law was made for lawbreakers, the law was made for evil people, not for righteous and good people. Therefore so long as we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law, and we have nothing to do with the law. Your problem is, your actions are guided by the promptings of the flesh, and you subject yourself to the flesh, and that is why you quarrel and fight with the people in your midst. The situation could be likened to the period when the country was under colonial rule, and she gained independence. For self-rule, Nigeria started formulating policies without consultation with the former colonial master. For instance, a national flag reflecting the interests and objectives which she wished the people to imbibe, were fashioned and hoisted. A new national anthem was written for the people, and uniforms for both the police and army produced. All these were to give the people of Nigeria an identity, and to change the people's consciousness. In order to consolidate her independence, the former colonial currency, the pound sterling, was replaced with the Naira. It was because of the fact, the pound sterling had on its face, the head of the British monarch. Nigerians used to refer to the British pound as the white man's money, and even the civil service was regarded as a white man's job. That is why till today some people still regard money, and the civil service, as belonging to the white man. With this colonial mentality, people prefer to bear such names as John, Peter, James and Paul, to the detriment of their African names. Was your grandfather's name John or Peter? You know quite well, these names are for him. Then, why must you continue to bear them, and even give them to your children? Did you know, it is a sign of colonial bondage, and an attempt to destroy the root of your ancestors? You are no longer under colonial bondage, and you should behave as free men. Many streets, towns, and cities in the former colonial territories, with foreign names are, now radically changed to reflect their freedom. The churches are not scared, in this attachment, to the superiority, of the whites. They cannot take any independent decision on their own, without consulting their headquarters, in the western world. Under such conditions, it means, countries, with churches having their headquarters in the western world, are not yet independent. They are still under the yoke of slavery. Those in the Roman Catholic Church are ruled from Rome. Brotherhood is original. No matter the level of education and social status acquired by the blacks, the white leaders of these churches still regard them as slaves. The Pope, who is in Rome, is their resident and ruler. This is the cause of many problems and confusion in the world today. 
None of the branches of the Catholic missions, scattered all over the world, has the authority to initiate any meaningful policy with regards to the affairs of their mission, or their individual country. The same is applicable to the Church of England. All the branches are controlled from England. Members of these foreign churches are still slaves to their foreign colonial masters, and are so regarded by the whites. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, which is the new kingdom of God, is led by the Holy Spirit. We are therefore not under any law, nor colonial yoke. Wherever a Brotherhood of the Cross and Star member is, he has the freedom to operate, because he is led by the Holy Spirit. It is said, when the priesthood is changed, the law of necessity must change, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12. Formerly, England and many parts of the world were directly under the Pope. The Pope was the only kinmaker in many parts of their empire. It was then customary for the Pope to anoint and bless the person enthroned, otherwise, he had no authority. So, when King James became the King of England, he refused to acknowledge the authority of the Pope, and he went ahead to establish the Church of England. The head of the Church, the Archbishop of Canterbury, is not under the Pope in any way. But the Blacks are, in this last age, still under the tutelage of their colonial masters in their churches. In a wider context, the people claim to have gained political independence, but in the real sense, they have not gained anything. It is only members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star who are completely free, because the fold is original, and without any colonial traces. There are a lot of things you are fond of doing, the implications of which, you do not know. In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star everything is made new, and has no relationship with, the old world. For instance, our hymn book, method of prayers, singing, and dancing, are completely new, and without any link to, the old world. It is written we are looking for a new heaven, and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. A new heaven and a new earth. Brotherhood of the cross and star is that new heaven and earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Here in this kingdom, no one claims to come from any particular community or country. Therefore it is out of ignorance for any member in the fold to say, I am African, American, British or Russian. We do not believe in such divisive tendencies. We believe only in the philosophy of brotherhood, oneness and universal love. Pouring of libation, and sacrificing at grave sides, or at any place, are signs of bondage. Brotherhood does not encourage the giving or receiving of bribes. We do not believe in calling human beings father, and other names, because we are all brothers and sisters. The various signs people make during ordination in the churches, are useless, and of no effect. Such things are not found in the sound doctrines of brotherhood. And so our paramount duty is to listen to the Holy Spirit, and comply with all instructions issued by Him. Anyone who does what the Holy Spirit directs, cannot commit any sin. But, if you walk by the dictates of the law, you are covered with darkness. That is why in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, there is no difference between the old, young, poor, rich, strong or weak. We are all one in the Lord. There is nothing that is as important, in this kingdom, as listening to the instructions of God, and carrying them out. Live by the instructions of God, and that is all. It is said, where there is no law, nobody is regarded as a lawbreaker. It is the law that brings about misunderstanding. The skin of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56. So when there is no law, there is no sin at all. In the same vein where there is no sin, there is no death at all. Whether you are baptized into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star or not, your share of goodness or tribulation must surely come to you. In like manner, whether you register in any of the fellowships or not, your problems are solved like any other member. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not a church organization, therefore, the tradition of the church is that a member, who is a debtor to the church should not be favored in any matter, is not applicable in this kingdom. We are led by the Spirit of God, and whatever we are directed to do, is what we do. For this reason, we love all people. If you observe the activities in this kingdom, you would realize, if people were to be levied for any project, nothing tangible would have been achieved. For instance, if you announce people should contribute 3,000 Naira for charity, nobody would like to pay even 1 Naira towards the fund. But under the philosophy of brotherhood, which is love and oneness, such amount could be easily raised in a very short time during fundraising. 
In such a situation, one person would even raise the father's envelope with about 2,000 naira. This shows love only rules in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. If there is any fundraising activity, and you send a special invitation to some selected people, whom you hoped would donate much money, you would be disappointed none of them would turn up. Even the people you never invited, nor had any hope on, would raise the fund. That is, why I keep on telling you, none has understood brotherhood yet. Many people are still led by the dictates of the flesh. We are led by the spirit, and whatever you see, in this kingdom, is done by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you attend a meeting, where several proposals are made, yet nothing is done in the end. If you are directed by the spirit to go to a place, like I get I clean to preach, if you fail to go, then you have disobeyed God, and you would have to suffer for it. If you are directed by the Holy Spirit to set up a building for God's worship, and are in a position to handle the project, but out of selfishness, you refuse to heed this instruction, you will have problems. So brethren, if you compare this kingdom to the world, you would realize the difference. We are not under the law, for the law was made for evil people, and not for the children of God. Read the first Bible lesson again. First Bible lesson, Galatians chapter 3 verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, your real neighbor. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ was in the house teaching his disciples, and someone came to inform him, his mother and brethren were waiting for him outside. He pointed to his disciples whom he was still teaching and said, they were his mother, sisters and brothers. That all those who did what his heavenly father directed were his brothers, sisters and mother. Matthew chapter 12 verse 15. So when that lawyer asked him what he should do to have eternal life, he let the lawyer read from the scriptures, and the lawyer read, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. But the lawyer, trying to justify himself, asked him who his neighbor is. Our Lord Jesus Christ then told him a parable about a traveler, who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who beat him, and left him unconscious. A priest came that way, and passed by the side of the road. A Levite also came that way, and acted exactly as the priest. Finally, a Samaritan, who traveled along the route came to the spot, and discovered, the man was in a pool of blood. The Samaritan had compassion on him. He bound up the wounds and finally took him to an inn, where he took care of the traveler. Luke chapter 10 verses 27 to 34. When the Samaritan was about to leave the following day, he left two pence to the innkeeper to take care of the traveler. The Samaritan also promised to pay whatever cost was incurred when he returned. Then our Lord Jesus Christ asked the lawyer, among these three people, who came across the unfortunate traveler, who was his real neighbor. The lawyer said it was the merciful Samaritan. So our Lord Jesus Christ told him to go and do same to others. Luke chapter 10 verses 35 to 37. The word of God says that not all the Israelites are the children of Israel. Also, that not all the children of Abraham are his real children. Romans chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. Who are the real children of promise? Who are the real children of Abraham? All those who are controlled by the Spirit of God are the children of promise. Your real brothers and sisters from the same womb may not necessarily be your relations. In other words, a person who really loves you is your brother or sister. That person who is ready to help you anytime you are in trouble is your brother, sister, and mother. Your spiritual brethren are your real relations, and they are the ones who love you. Some people in brotherhood have already understood this fact, but many others are yet to know this fact. That is why people claim Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members love each other so much. A real Brotherhood member should know the person who helps in time of trouble is their real brother, sister, or mother. A person who thinks about your welfare and helps you when in need is your real neighbor. The world is only concerned with the welfare of their close relations. Like the testimony of Brother Inat Patron, that in Lagos some members have grouped themselves along tribal lines. For instance, they now have Warren Brethren, and then Group and Ibadio Members Association, among others. Such an attitude amounts to rebellion, and it breeds confusion. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star has nothing to do with divisions and tribal groupings. 
If you will recall, when some Gentiles received the Holy Spirit, some of the apostles agitated, they, the Gentiles, should be circumcised, before they were fully accepted in their midst. After much argument Peter rose up and said, Men and brethren, ye know how that good, while ago, God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel, and believe. And God, which know of the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even, as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers, nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Acts chapter 15 verses 7 to 11. Therefore, as a child of God, any person who is led by the Holy Spirit is your real sister or brother. So we are living in the Spirit, not in the flesh. So long, as you continue to claim you come from Nigeria, Britain, America or any other country or continent, it means you are in the flesh. It is a worldly statement from the flesh that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is from Nigeria or Africa. When you claim this is the time of the blacks, you are being led by the flesh. In the spirit, there is no distinction on the basis of race, color or sex. The moment you start causing division by claiming this person is white or black, it means you are in the flesh, and you are therefore under judgment. If you call some people strangers and others indigenes, you have failed for there is no stranger in brotherhood of the cross and star. We are all indigenes and offspring of God. In the world, kings and wealthy people are given special seats in a meeting, while the poor ones and servants are given low seats. This is not practiced here in brotherhood, because everybody is given equal treatment. If you fail to walk in the spirit of God, by being a respecter of persons, instead of giving equal treatment to people, you are under judgment. You can't see, what God did for the Israelites, he did equally for the Gentiles. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35. If you love all people equally, you are not under the law. If you love one person and hate the other, then you have broken the law, and you have placed yourself under the law. If you are sharing something and you give three to one, and two to the other, and one to the third person, but to the fourth person you give nothing, it means you have failed, and it means you are not in the spirit. Any person who is in the spirit does not discriminate. He loves all people equally, and he has no difficulty in anything he does. That is, why I always ask you to come here, 34 Endo Street, Caliper to hear from the horse's mouth. Equality before God. Some people say a woman cannot preach the word of God to them. They claim women and children should not be permitted to preach before the congregation. Then the question is, is there any distinction between men and women, or adults and children in this kingdom? The Holy Spirit is the teacher and everything. Therefore let nobody walk in the flesh, to judge others. Do not look, hear, or think in the way the flesh directs, but always act according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. If you claim to walk in the Spirit, it means you must not tell lies, steal or commit any sin. If you love truth, patience, and you practice righteousness, then you are in the Spirit. Whoever is in peace with all people loves him, and will be truthful to him, because he is in Spirit. Remember it is written in the law, you should honor your parents and elderly people, but here we honor all people and love them. A common mistake many people make, even in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is, the first good things they would want to do, is in their villages. How many establishments was our Lord Jesus Christ responsible, for in his village? He did not do anything worthy of mention in his hometown. So, he listens to the Spirit, for anyone to walk by the Spirit, they are not under the law. Sometimes you plan to attend a fundraising activity, and right from your house the spirit directs you to donate 1,000 naira, which you can afford. But when you get to the function, and you discover, the highest donor presents only 50 naira, and so for that reason alone, you change your mind, and you donate only 100 naira. With such an attitude, it means you are still in the flesh. This is what I have seen a lot of people do, even in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. If the chairman gives say 100 naira, you who had intended to donate 2000 naira would change your mind, and donate 100 naira too, so, as not to annoy the chairman. This is the way of the world. So do not emulate any human being, but always listen to the spirit, whatever he directs you to do, do that promptly. Right now I declare, there is no power neither from a human being nor from the laws made by man. 
All powers are owned and controlled by the Holy Spirit, who is now ruling and reigning throughout the universe. That is why, whenever we want to start our meetings or fellowships, we sing the Spirit of the Living God should come and lead, for it has been written he would lead. The Holy Spirit is the leader and perfect teacher. Whatever he does is correct and perfect. Those who are under the law have been separated from God. Read the second lesson below. Second Bible lesson, Galatians chapter 5 verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Do not disobey the silent command of the Holy Spirit. If you really take stock of all your activities daily, then you would accept the fact it is good to be led by the Holy Spirit. Can you count the wrong things you do every minute? But for the sake of the Holy Spirit, would you survive? Are you not aware, you are not under the law? Why should you say, you would not attend prayers any day? Do you own yourself? Whenever the Spirit asks you to get up for services, you complain, you are feeling weak. If you stay back, it means you have disobeyed the Spirit, and you would have problems. Sometimes, when you are ready to leave for a place, the Spirit asks you to stay back, for a visitor is coming to you. Instead of obeying this still small voice, you decide on your own to go, assuring yourself for many days you have been planning to attend, but failed, and you must go today. If you go, then you have failed. So, our main concern is to listen to the Holy Spirit, and carry out his instructions. At times, when you have a disagreement with somebody, the Spirit directs you to go and reconcile with him. But because of your human volition, you disobey this voice. You claim you cannot go to beg someone who had offended you. If you do so, you have failed, and you would have problems. Sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you to give someone about 20 naira, but because of your serious attachment to the flesh, you ponder over the matter, and finally decide not to give the money to such a person, because he had not asked you for it. If you fail to give that 20 naira, you would receive great punishment. Similarly, you may want to give free will offering, say, the sum of 5 naira. But the Holy Spirit directs you to give 10 naira. If you disobey by dropping just 5 naira in the tithe box, you have equally failed. If all of us would accept to walk by the Spirit, we would not have had any problems in life. All those who walk according to the law have many problems. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the kingdom of the living God. We have nothing to do with evil. We have nothing to do with human beings, for the Holy Spirit is the doer of everything. Whether a person hates or loves you, do not mind, but always listen to the Spirit. Whatever the Spirit directs you, accept it as the truth. Recall what took place between the woman of Samaria and our Lord Jesus Christ. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. John chapter 4 verses 19 to 23. So, that is what is meant by worshipping God in spirit and in truth. You have to listen to the directives of the Holy Spirit at all times. The Spirit would always instruct you about the Word of God. Any statement that is directly for you and which relates to your problem should be upheld and practiced. Those meant for other people should not bother you. The children of God are not indebted to the flesh, but to the Holy Spirit to do His will. Sometimes you go to a particular place, and the Spirit instructs you not to preach the Word of God to the people there. If you disobey this instruction, you will not fail to have problems. Listen to your Spirit. If you help somebody just because he is related to you, and you refuse to give help to others who are not your relations, you have failed. You have been warned by our Lord Jesus Christ not to call any person a teacher or master, for he alone is the teacher. Matthew chapter 23 verse 8. So the Holy Spirit is the only teacher and master who is able to do all things. So we are those who live in the Spirit. If you do things by the dictates of the flesh, it means you have been separated from Christ. It is stated, For, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Romans chapter 8 verse 12. We are not indebted to the flesh, but to the Holy Spirit. 
If the entire people in your community advise you not to do a particular thing, but the spirit gives you the command to go ahead, you should continue to accomplish your task, there would be no trouble with you at all. It was for this reason, Peter and others refused to obey Satan, when the worldly people asked them not to preach in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In reaction, Peter asked that whether it was better to hearken to the voice of man, rather than the voice of God. Acts chapter 4 verses 18 to 20. So beloved brethren, the problem of many members of this fold, and indeed the world in general, is that of not listening to the Holy Spirit, and walking according to his directives. Those who want to be justified through the law, would be judged by the law. All those who commit sin are under the law. All those who walk by the Spirit are not under the law. See the Golden Text. Golden Text, Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We are under grace. From the text you have heard we are not under law, but we are under grace. Since we are not under the law, but under grace, people would accuse you of not sacrificing a goat or a cow at the death of father or mother. You may be accused of not performing the acceptable funeral rite, according to the tradition of your people. If you dare comply with their wishes, you are gone completely. Do not listen to such devilish advice. At some other time, they may come to you to say, your wife has given birth to a baby and you should buy this or that, to initiate him into a one cult or the other. If you accept their advice, you have failed. Always pray and listen to the Holy Spirit, and what he directs you to do, do the same, for such is best, for you. The flesh has no power over us again, for it was nailed to the cross. Since the day of the crucifixion, when our Lord Jesus Christ pronounced, it is finished, the work of the flesh was completely destroyed. So you would be cheating yourself, if you walk in the flesh. The Holy Spirit has come with love, truth, patience, meekness, joy, righteousness and all goodness. Can you see any evil in goodness? His works are perfect. He has brought unity, oneness, wealth, lowliness, progress and universal love to mankind. So let all people know, wherever the giver of the word is, the one to practice what is spoken is also there. You are having these little problems in your life, because you have refused to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou jurdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. John chapter 21 verse 18. Our Lord Jesus Christ went to the wilderness not, because he liked it, but because it was the Spirit that led him there. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. You also have to be led by the Spirit at all times. Apostle Paul did not on his own go to Jerusalem, but was led by the Spirit. The Spirit told him to go, though both imprisonment and suffering were awaiting him there. That was why when the prophet bound his girdle and told him not to go, he was not perturbed at all. Rather he questioned the congregation what mean ye to weep, and to break mine heart. For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 21 verses 12 and 13. You are all aware of the fact, when our Lord Jesus Christ was with his disciples he never asked them to go to the Gentiles, instead, he directed them to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Anyway, after his resurrection Peter saw a vision, as recorded in the Bible. However it was not long until three people started looking for Peter. At the same time, the Holy Spirit told Peter to go down, because he the Holy Spirit had sent three men to meet him. These people came from Cornelius, a soldier and a Gentile by birth. Since it was the Spirit that asked Peter to go, he did, and followed the three men to their master's house. When the other disciples heard of Peter's visit to Cornelius the Gentile, they were offended. Later, when they inquired from him, why he mixed with the Gentiles, he told them, it was not his will to have done that, but he was directed by the Holy Spirit. Peter narrated the whole thing, as it happened to him. It was from then on that the Gentiles started receiving the gospel of salvation. Whenever you are directed by the Holy Spirit, do not hesitate, for he is before and behind you. It is said, one stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let those who have ears fear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father, 